Well, hi, guys. It's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Yesterday, I was talking about uh, James chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, about how we can't receive anything from God if we don't have faith for that. We've got to be single-minded and believe that God wants that for us. We've got to settle in our heart what God's will is. I told you that we could see in the Gospels what the Father's will was because Jesus was always doing the Father's will. It's all through all four Gospels. Today I'm going to quote one more verse. It's a short one. John chapter 5, verse 19. And it says, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but only what he sees the Father doing. So here clearly... If we see Jesus doing it in the Gospels, it's the Father's will. So, we can easily say that healing the sick, casting out devils, preaching the Gospel to people, uh, feeding people who are sick or hungry, that's His will. See, it's a wide range of things, but anything that we see Jesus doing, having compassion on people, that is the Father's will because God's character and nature is goodness. Okay. I would like today to try, <laughs> this is not going to be easy, guys, uh, I want to try to correct a wrong prayer that I have heard so many people do, uh, so I'm going to try my best. Here we go. I have heard church leaders, uh, Christians that have been believers for years and years, 30, 40 years, and I think what the error is, is that we hear a leader or someone pray that, and we think, oh, well, they know what they're doing. I'll just pray the way they do. And I've noticed that we are not really taught how to pray a faith-filled prayer. The Bible says that there is a prayer, a, an effective, fervent prayer, availeth much. Did you know if there's an effective prayer and it's fervent, there's got to be an ineffective, not so fervent prayer either, and it won't avail anything. Okay, so there is a way to pray. Uh, today I want to address one correction that, you, that will radically change what you receive from God if you can get a hold of this. And I want to talk about that wrong prayer that's just passed down through the church. And I'm going to use an example. Somebody's praying, and they're like, well, you know, we pray that Betty's going to get well, and she's going to go down, go home from the hospital, and she's not going to have cancer anymore. But whatever your will is, God, let that be our will. Did you know that is not a faith-filled prayer? It is not. It's not. Because what that says is that we're not sure what God wants for Betty, and he may want her to die and be sick, but then again, he may want to heal her. Well, see, we don't see Jesus teaching that in the Gospels, do we? No, what we see is people wanting to be healed and Jesus healing all of them. Jesus has never, ever said, it's not God's will to heal you, so I'm not going to do that today. Okay, so we won't see God saying that. God the Father will never say that. We see the will of God is to heal all people. All right, let me go a little further. Okay, I told a lady this once, and I know I probably upset her. I get that. But I want her to receive from God, okay? If I don't correct it, she'll never receive from God, and she'll walk around in unbelief and not believe that God is a good God and never know where, you know, whether her prayers are going to be answered. So I want to explain today what the difference is. When Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will. That is a totally different type of what's going on. That's a different situation than us praying for something from God and saying, oh, well, whatever your will is. I'm gonna, I, I, it's not what I want, probably, but I'm going to submit to it and try to work my way through it and accept your opinion and your decision. That, that's totally different than what Jesus did. So I'm going to go over today and I'm going to read to you all three accounts of that prayer that Jesus was praying the night before they arrested him, beat him, pulled his beard out, put a crown of thorns on him, spit on him, beat him in the face. He was beat on his back and front, 
according to what I have studied, he's had over 120 stripes on his body from the, uh, the whip called a cat of nine tails on his back and front both. He didn't even look like a human anymore. Look, he knew what was going to happen to him through all of that and even hanging on the cross being crucified, that they would pull his arms out of joint to nail him to the cross. All of these things. Jesus knew this was going to happen. So keep in mind his prayer here, okay? It says, After walking a little further away from them, Jesus fell on his face to the ground and prayed, Father, if it be possible, do not give me this cup of suffering. But do what you want, not what I want. That was in Matthew. Now I'm going to go over to Mark, and here he's praying. Here Mark records, Jesus said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup of judgment away from me. But not what I will, but what you will. The next one, I'm going to go over to Luke, chapter 22, verse 42. Jesus said, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup of wrath from me. Yet not my will, but always your will be done. Right here, what Jesus is saying is, I don't know your will. He's not saying that, guys. Jesus is not saying, I don't know what you want, so just do what you want. No, Jesus is saying, I know what's in front of me, and I know what the plan is, but I also know that the moment is upon me, and my flesh is screaming, I don't want to go through this. If there's any other way to accomplish man's redemption, please, let's do that now and save me from what I'm fixing to go through over the next 17 hours. That is a totally different, and even then, knowing what he was going to go through, he said, whatever I have to do, let me do that to set man free. Guys, that is totally different than doing some prayer and going, whatever your will is, what you have done is said out loud. I don't trust you. I don't know what you really want from me, if it's good or bad or for whoever I'm praying for. I don't know. So just whatever it is, we're going to try to accept that. Now, let me show you how you really pray for somebody that's got cancer. You ready? Father, I know that it is not your will that Betty be sick of anything. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I command cancer to die and leave her body and for her to be healed. Every cell and every tissue throughout her entire body be healed in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that you always hear me. And you, since you hear me, I always have what I have asked for. Amen. That is a fervent, effective prayer of faith. God bless you, and I'll see you right here again. Bye-bye.